we've looked at setting up Samba for um, Windows shares, um, and that was on you know an ext3 or 4 partition on a native Linux system. But what if you wanted to, you know, what if I want to set up Samba on an NTFS partition? Well, first off, um, I'll need to you know configure and mount those partitions, and so let me hit Alt F2. And there's a file on etcfs tab, and these are the drives that are you know automatically mounted. And I've, I've put some notes here, but this by default would be you know probably the only entry after you install uh, and set up Ubuntu. But um, just using a, a few of the command line tools, I can actually see the the layout of Pegasus. In this case, the server's name is Pegasus. host name. And the first one, if I use sudo fdisk-l, I can kind of see the partitions. And the way this works, um, you know, sdb, this is a 320 gigabyte serial ATA drive, and it has one partition. All right, here's a 300 gigabyte, and um, it's actually a, a parallel ATA drive, and it too has one partition, sdg. Um, SDH here, this is a 500 gigabyte drive, it's parallel ATA and it has one partition. And if I come up here, this uh, SDA is a serial ATA drive, it's 320 gigabytes, and it has six partitions. And I can tell, you know, this is my Windows system partition here on SDA1, um, you know, about 105 megabytes, just the boot files for Windows 7. This is the data partition, about 50, excuse me, about 80 gigabytes on the data partition for Windows 7. Um, this is an extended drive because remember you can only have four primary partitions. So because I needed you know two for Windows 7 and I needed two for Linux and I wanted to have a data partition five, um, I've got to use logical drives. I, I couldn't do everything in primary primary partitions or I wouldn't you know I I wouldn't be able to use all of the available space. So basically I set up an extended partition and then configured some logical drives and partitions. And so here you have a data partition that's about you know 195 almost 200 gigabytes, and then here you have um, you know this is a, a Linux partition, all right, uh, Type 83, and then ext4, and then over here is a Type 82 or a Linux swap partition. So we can see you know, we can see all of these partition types, and I just kind of put these over here the, in the fs tab file and the ASCII folder. As in with most config files, um, the pound symbol here is, you know, it's a comment tag. And it just tells Linux, you know, ignore that. Don't worry about that. So this way I can kind of put notes into it and show you guys what's going on. So I just I just labeled all of that here so you can see physical drive 1, 2, 3, and 4, and the partition structure. Um, and also, note, you know, all those are SDB, but, you know, parallel uh, or ATA drives, I IDE drives, would normally be HDA, HDB, HTC, and HDD if you're daisy chaining and you have two on a port. Um, here are just some examples of how you might automatically mount, uh, you know, FAT32, which is VFAT or NTFS, and we'll go over the, the syntax of that. Um, this is how you would mount uh, old school, and that's um, without a UUID, and specifying the user ID, the group ID, and the mask. So kind of an old school mount would just be the device name, which you could get from fdisk with the dash L option. The folder you want to mount it to, the you know the type of mount it's going to be, VFAT or NTFS. If it's going to be read and write, it needs to be NTFS dash 3G. The plain old NTFS is, is a read-only mount of an NTFS file system, by the way. Auto um, users or no users. Users mean that user, any user can mount it. Um, no users, only root can mount it. The user ID could be a name or his ID and the group ID a name or the group ID of who has permission to access that, that partition. Uh, the directory mask and the file mask. And this works just like umask. Remember umask is the inverse or the opposite of when you chmod. So if I chmod 777, I give something all permission to the user, to the group, and to other. Um, if I were to umask or set the umask of something to 777, I'm saying remove all permission. So that would be like chmod 0, 0, which you know wouldn't work. That's impractical, but just to make the case for the pointer or to you know show you 
to, to give you an example. So um, this works just like the U mask, although the D mask is for directories, so D mask. And in this case, we're saying remove nothing. So that would be like chmod7. And remember, it goes read, write, execute. So in this case, we would be removing write. So that would be like a chmod5, you know, read and execute. And here we're saying remove everything. So that would be like a chmod0. That's the directory mask. Now remember on directories, if you don't have the execute permission, you can't even browse the directory, even if you have read. So you need a combination of read and execute to be able to enter a directory. And finally, the file mask, F mask over here. And again, we're saying remove execute from user. And then this would be the combination of uh, execute and write. And then this would be remove everything. Okay. And then a file system type. And then over here, um, you know, in this case, we have two more options. And this would be, you know, whether or not we're going to, um, you know, check it and whether or not we're going to back it up. We'll, we'll take a look at that. Okay, so um, this is the, the first method I'm, I'm going to try here. Um, let me go ahead and comment these lines out. And there's a couple of tools that we will use. Okay, and this FS tab file is loaded every time you, you boot a Linux uh, server or operating system, the FS tab file is loaded. So in this case, I'm going to comment these out. And this is sort of the old school way of doing it here. So. I want to mount these four partitions, okay? And there's a command um, that we can use, u mount a, and that pretty much you know emulates what happens at boot time, um, and that would load everything that's indicated or listed in your fs tab file. So I'm going to use that command. Um, let me go over here, and of course I need root privileges, and I'm just going to say mount dash a. And when I enter this command, it's going to read the FS tab file, and it will go and look for these devices. If you, if you look at the syntax, SDH1, SDG1, SDB1, and SDA4, these are all separate physical drives and different partitions. And it's going to mount them to these four folders that I've already created inside of media. And uh, if you want, I'll browse there. But remember that when you mount something, you always have to create a temporary folder to mount it to, or in, in this case, a permanent one. And let me go to media. And then there's data one, data, data two, data three, data four. Okay. And actually, let me, un I'm not going to be able to unmount. I'm going to have to use a command to hang on. Let me just. Nothing is mounted there. Okay. All right. Okay, so now with none of those mounted, let me use the mount command and we'll just make sure. All right, and so we just have our operating system mount, our ext4, which is our Linux installation and the swap partition. None of the other partitions are mounted. So, um, but again, it'll, it'll mount it to these folders. I want to make them read and write, so I'm going to use NTFS3G. I'm going to use the default settings, and default. all of these are sort of default settings. So let me save the file, and now I'm going to use the commands of clear, and sudo, and mount, and dash A. Okay. And with that command, here are my mounted drives. And so let's let's take a look. Here's the 500 gig, and kind of just through the icon over there. But let me just drag that over there. All right. So the two 300 gig partitions, um, a 500 gig and 185 gigabyte, and these are actually mounted in these folders. So these shortcuts here are just like you know soft links to those folders. When you browse files on a folder, you're not actu actually looking at files on that folder but it's a representation of you know a partition that is mounted to the folder